Ladies and gentlemen, scientists tell us that people on vacation today don't know how to relax. In discussing the problem of relaxation tonight, we bring you a man well known for putting people to sleep, Milton Burl. <laughs> Thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Gallup, did I hear right? I, vivacious, effervescent, scintillating Milton Berle? <laughs> Me, I put people to sleep with my jokes? Uh, how dare you? I fling the challenge in your teeth. Hey, that's dangerous. He can fling his teeth back at me. <laughs> and I'll fling that back at the writer. <laughs> Listen. No, I, I really, please, I don't put people to sleep. Listen to this. Ladies and gentlemen, I will offer $500 to anyone who can prove that listening to me put them to sleep. Let me repeat that offer. Five dollars to... Five dollars to anyone who can prove... Hello? What? One of my jokes put you to sleep? Ridiculous. Tell me the joke. Yeah? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh. Oh, wake up. Uh, what? Who deal? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, 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 the phone, yeah. Hello? Yes, yes, you win. That's, that's my joke. Yeah, well, you'll get the money. I'll drop it off on my way home, Mother. Good night. <laughs> Gee, Mr. Gallo, what a memory my mother has for jokes. Thank goodness. <laughs> well, Burl, let's get back to our subject, relaxation. Well, you, you tell us about it, Mr. Gallup. You, you always look so relaxed and cool, like you just can't wait to get back on the slab. <laughs> I mean, I mean it, Mr. Gallup. May, may I ask you something? How do you do it? Well, I simply spend my weekends at a camp in Connecticut. A camp? Yes, Camp Beethoven. Camp Beethoven, yes. yes. It's a paradise for music lovers. For two days, we just let ourselves go. You really rough it, eh? Rough it? Oh, oh we're practically savages. Are you? <laughs> at breakfast, we just sit there with our spats unbuttoned. <laughs> Gee, that, that, that's barbaric. What, uh, what else do you do? Well, we finish breakfast at three in the afternoon. Three in the afternoon? Yes, we have to sit around for hours waiting for the oboe players to finish eating. It takes them that long. Small mouths, you know. Oh, yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> they have to eat their grape nuts one at a time. Oh, no. And, and then what happens? Off we go down Rachmaninoff Road for a dip in Lake Shostakovich. Oh, I bet you that's peachy, isn't it? Yes, yes, indeed. It, it, it's a mad scramble down to the shore. Last one in is a common Lombardo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you devil, you. Well, after such excitement, Mr. Gallup, you must, you must fall into bed exhausted. Or as old Lud Beethoven would say, Auschkepoop. <laughs> oh, heavens, no. At no, no. night, at night, there's a campfire and Deems Taylor takes over. Deems Taylor. Oh, with the funny stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, what does Deems do? Well, first, yeah. he comes out wearing a lampshade on his head. Oh, that, that's comical. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Then. Yes. Then he moistens the palms of his hands yeah. and squeezes out the entire score of Mussolski's Night on Bald Mountain. <laughs> oh, Mr. Gallup! My, my, my sides are... That's what a... Nothing! <laughs> but let's go on with the show. Please, let's go on with the show. If you don't mind, Mr. Mr. Block. Oh, you played it good tonight. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as the tempo of modern civilization quickens, man is forced to get away from it all. Sometimes they take to the woods, like Senator Brewster, but sometimes... <laughs> he, he turns... Your name and address again, please. <laughs> the woman is here every week. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Sometimes, sometimes a man likes to take to the woods and get away from it all. Sometimes he turns to nature. Here he finds tall pines, rippling streams. Oh, that's lovely. One of the secrets for relaxation... All right, Ray. Oh, thank you. That's enough. One of the secrets of re... Okay, Ray. Knock off. Thank you. One of... All right. The mood has been set. Thank you. Stop. I'll stop. Attention, racing fans. Here are the results of the first race at Saratoga. I told you. I told you how I stopped them. That always works. What an orchestra. They, they just sit there, but their minds are thousands of miles away with their bookies. 
going to the baseball game has been one of America's greatest means of relaxation. Now, you take the case of Mr. C.C. Slocum of St. Louis, Missouri, who has found the secret of relaxation. He came all the way to Brooklyn and is now at Ebbets Field watching the Dodgers play the St. Louis Cardinals. Here he finds perfect relaxation. Come in, Ebbets Field. <laughs> Mr. Slocum, Mr. Slocum, are, are you enjoying yourself? I'm having a grand time. <laughs> well, that's good. Label! Come on, Brooklyn! Come on, you guys, you guys, Brooklyn! Hooray! Hooray for St. Louis! <laughs> and that is Mr. Slocum's secret for relaxation. <laughs> Mr. Slocum is lying there so relaxed. He may still be there for the World Series. Ah, but Mr. Brooklyn hopes. But Mr. Gallup, Mr. Gallup, will there ever be anything more relaxing? Relaxing? How do you like that? Sound like Lum and Abner. <laughs> Mr. Gallup, will there ever be anything more relaxing than the seashore? Ah, uh, Mr. Gallup, remember? Remember when you and that only girl walked along the beach as you sang? By the sea, by the sea, by the beautiful sea. You and I, you and I, how happy we'll be. Uh, ah, by the beautiful sea with Cynthia. Cynthia, I remember the first time that I met Cynthia. It was at the beach. I was digging for clams and I came up with her. Uh, ah, but when Cynthia came out of the water and she threw her robe off her shoulders, the way the sun would glance off the back where it said Golden Gloves, 1912. <laughs> Cynthia was so dainty. Salt water wasn't good for her hair. She used to have to put it up. Up on the top shelf of her locker. <laughs> oh, what fun Cynthia and I had by the seashore. I'd throw a stick in the water, and in a little while she'd come out with it, with an amount with... Hello. <laughs> like I had that stick in my mouth. And the way the crowds... It'd be funny if this is an audition, and we don't know it. <laughs> And the way the crowds, the crowds would scatter when they'd st see, uh, hello. Ah, uh, too bad this is not an hour show, you know. Thirty minutes to hear it and thirty minutes to regret it. But, but it was the little things I loved about Cynthia. When she'd come out of the water, that graceful little way, she'd toss her head back to loosen the lobster that was clamped on her nose. <laughs> her tinkling little laugh, the tinkling little laugh, whenever someone stepped on the broken pop bottle she had hidden in the sand, and the way Cynthia went into a dive, and then the way she'd stagger out. <laughs> yes, Cynthia? I love to be beside you, side by the sea, beside you, by the a beautiful... See? Oh, bad, bad. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Don't... Don't applaud, please. If you like it, just nod. That's all I want. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are very fortunate to have with us tonight America's foremost authority on relief from nervous tension. Author and lecturer on relaxation, Dr. Sigmund Pom Pom. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Pom Pom. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm uh, sorry, I didn't mean to say Mr. Doctor. All right, quite all right. You've been working hard all these years Very to well. get that name. Dr. Pom Pom, uh, may I say, using me as your subject, would you demonstrate to our listeners, or our listener, your, um, <laughs> your famous method of relaxation through suggestion? Of course, Mr. Burns. You would, all right. Now, uh, first, say to yourself, I am not nervous. All is calm. Go ahead. I am not nervous. All is... Calm. No, 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 Mr. Burrell, please. Yes. If you keep on breathing to your equilibrium, you must find a certain kind of a short state that will give you such a strain, which will never even try to equalize your course state. We are the ones who know that you have a panic. That's our only being the fact for the boy. And with your hips, it's dangerous. <laughs> try it again. Yes. I am not nervous. Mr. Burrell, I distinctly told you it's all in the way you're scrapping it. After all, like the rippling cord of the trade bay, we find the soul beat of the trade. We are the ones who have no cord of any faith at last. I had the same trouble with Gregory Peck. <laughs> right again. Yes, sir. I am not... No, no, no. 
you're making the same mistake another patient made. He said, Dr. Pumpum, I would like to force Beta Krillman. <laughs> he would like to force Beta Krillman. <laughs> what should I tell him? I said, great, your own patty, because the behemoth of our force has always left the grizzly green. And would you believe it? What? Today, that man is dead. <laughs> Try it again. I... No, no, no. Again, you are using the wrong approach. Yeah. I want you to feel that you are wafted out with the farm of flowers. You are listening to a stage which makes you so burn. All right. Try it again. <laughs> I star on them virus. All is glad you're by the <laughs> That's it. Now you're relaxed. Huh? <laughs> Goodbye. And have nice promise day for please. Thank I'll you, Mr. Silent Calvin. Thank you, Dr. Pom Pom. You're a brilliant man. You know, it isn't what he says, Mr. Gallup, but how he doesn't say it. <laughs> Burl, there's work to be done. Yes, Mr. Gallup. And uh, who am I this week? Well, nothing is so relaxing as the magic spell of poetry, though. Yeah. And you are that noted poet, Henry Wadsworth Long, Burl. <laughs> Got a laugh. Uh, yes. <laughs> now... It'll happen again, I assure you. <laughs> well, if you'll give me a chance... No ad living. <laughs> I'll give you a chance. Say it again. Say it again. All right. You are that noted poet, Henry Wadsworth Longbirl. I told you. <laughs> I told you. Well, as you step forward to read your latest poem, your admirers cheer. Hurrah! Hurrah! hurrah. hurrah. <laughs> Thank you. And now my poem. List. Hark, hark, the lark doth bark. The lark doth bark? <laughs> hark, hark. Hurrah! Hurrah! <laughs> Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to continue our subject of how to relax, we now present... Relaxation Forum tonight. Relaxation Forum tonight. The question, is the Milton Berle Show taking the place of Novocaine? Thank you, thank you. Tell me, Mr. Gallup, would you say, would you say that I'm high strung? Yes, you should be from a tree. <laughs> You're gaining. Let's, uh, let's start, let's start the forum right now. Let's start with this young man coming up smelling from mothballs. Uh, young man, uh, what is your name? My name is Jersey City. <laughs> Jersey City? Yeah, they named me after my birthplace. Oh, you were, you were born in Jersey City? No, I was born in Newark. Then why do they call you Jerry? Why don't they call you Newark? Newark? Yeah. What kind of a name is that for a boy? Oh, I see, I see. My father's name is Passaic. I, I, I got a brother, Hackensack. You mean your whole family is named after cities in New Jersey where they were born? Yeah, all except my mother. It would have been too ridiculous. Where was she born? Elizabeth. <laughs> Well, that makes sense. All right, Jason City, you have a question about relaxation? Uh, no. If you want to relax, the best thing is don't ask questions. But you... Especially in this hot weather. Leave people alone. All right, If you but... want to stay healthy, just leave people alone. Okay. If... You're no good, I'm telling you. Leave people alone. But I don't... You can start with me. Leave me alone. But all Look I... Will you stop pestering please. me? Please. Oh, shut up! <laughs> now, please, pull yourself together. Sorry, I... I blew up. That's all right. <laughs> all right, now, have you a question? Well, it's, um, it's more of a statement. All right. What's your statement? Drop dead! <laughs> Please? Who's next? This young lady here in the aisle canning peaches. Um, what is your name, please? Tallulah Feeney. I'm a homemaker. I see. And, uh, and you, you have a question concerning relaxation? Yeah, how can I get my husband to calm down? He's sure a nervous Jake. He's nervous? It's his job. It's nerve-wracking. Well, what does he do? He's a detective down at the gas company. A detective at the gas company? Yeah, at 6 o'clock when the waiters leave the gas company. Yes? He sniffs them to see if they've taken any home. <laughs> He's a nervous man, eh? Just from worrying, he already lost 60 pounds. He's down to 215. He's... Oh, gee. He's a skeleton. The doctor says he's got a nervous stomach. A nervous stomach? Yeah, it's always afraid it ain't going to get enough food in it. <laughs> he can't calm down? At night, he don't sleep. He just keeps tossing and turning. That bothers you? It's like sleeping next to a mix master. <laughs> well, why doesn't he try sleeping pills? Are you kidding? 
He's so full of sleep and pills when he walks, he sounds like a ping pong tournament. Gosh. One doctor recommended a midnight snack before going to sleep. Yes? He made himself a big sandwich. Garlic, sausage, onions, and a slab of Lita Kranz cheese. Yes? He come into bed, turned to me, and said, Good night, sweetheart. And he went out like a light? No, I did. Oh, well, thank you very much, Mrs. Singer. Thank you. In tribute to the great calm and peace that has settled over New York City since the bookies were driven out by the police, let us all join in and sing. Place your bet at twilight when the cops lay low. And the flickering bookies softly come and go. The police are waiting just to catch that schmo. He'll swim in from Jersey Just to take your dough Just to take your dough Dough, 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 dough You're you're so relaxing And and speaking of relaxation Reminds you of an incident you're going to tell about Do you mind? Not at all If you rather wouldn't Oh, please do I will Carry on Thank you Thank you Thank you (laughs) Now there's no time left to tell her. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Mr. Gallup, here's what happened. Last summer, I came home after a long, tough vaudeville tour, split week in Sacramento, and I was worn out, and I was beat. And as I stepped into the house, I'll never forget. <laughs> Daddy's home. Hello, dear. Hello, Junior. Daddy's home. <laughs> Milton, get up. Are you hurt? Junior. How many times must I tell you not to leave your fire engine in front of the door? You try to find a parking place in New York. Quiet. Boy, it's hot. This being in the city is brutal. Hot and sticky. Yeah, I know. When a psychiatrist got through with me today, he had to peel me off the couch like a banana. Oh. Oh, what I'd give for one good night's sleep. Milton, I have a surprise. Yeah? Bert Lyon and his wife left for California, and they gave me the keys to their summer house in Mineola on Long Island. Isn't that nice of them? Well, uh, that's like the country, oh boy. Just one night's sleep away from the noise of the city. Let's pack. Come on. Let's go, everybody. Yeah! <laughs> Get that country air coming in through the bedroom window. Yeah, that writing academy must be right next door. (laughs) Enough out of you, Junior. Now go to bed. Oh, boy, am I going to hit the sack. I'm turning out the lights, dear. Good night. Have a good night's sleep, Milton. Don't worry, darling, I will. Uh, uh, Quiet in the country. What's that? Help! Lock the doors! Wolves! There! Milton, quiet. That's just a little cricket. Uh, a cricket? A cricket yelling like that? That's the noise they make by rubbing their legs together. Oh, is, is that all? <laughs> I was one. Well, good night, dear. Uh, just a little cricket. Some noise they get by rubbing their legs together. <laughs> that one must be wearing corduroy pants. Brother. Milton, will you get to sleep? No, give me a shoe. I'll get rid of that cricket. There. The neighbor's window. Shh. Listen, see? The cricket is gone. Now for some sleep. What's that? So long, Pete. Thanks for the lift home. Night, Pete. Good night. Well, party, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Who lives next door? Howard Hughes? No, the they went in. They'll be asleep in a minute. Now relax. Relax, she says. All right. Uh. Oh, so it was me who was drunk at the party, huh? Ah, shut up. Yes, I didn't you. wait for a minute. The clock out of the bar. She was breaking off the neck. Why are you... Don't you dare strike me, Brentwood Bindleheimer. <laughs> hey, will you two shut up and let people sleep? Oh, the the back. Shut up, you jerk. Yeah, keep your big nose out of this lobster face. Please, <laughs> will you go to sleep? Why don't you shut that 
that big bazooka of yours. Let me sleep. Yatate, yatate, yatate. Oh, please. Darling, where's the bed? There. Quiet. Good night, dear. Good night. Ah. <laughs> oh, no. One sheep. Two sheep. Ooh. I'll fix that cricket. Scat, shoot, beat it. <laughs> there. I scared him away. Ah, peace at last. Oh, no. Answer the phone. It's in the hall. All right, it's pitch dark. Which way is the hall? <laughs> His toothbrush he didn't bring. His fire engine he brought. <laughs> Three o'clock in the morning and the phone rings. Hello? What? What program am I listening to? <laughs> Harry Horlick and his A&P gypsies. <laughs> Good night. Oh, I, don't, I don't care about sleeping anymore. I, I just want to live through the night. <laughs> Milton, will you stop roaming about now? Please. Sleep, she says. <laughs> oh, this is murder. Hey, Brentwood, look, our wind is broken. to our hot apartment in the city at four in the morning. Crazy? Junior, shut the window. There. I don't care if we stifle. As long as we're not in the country. Good night. Ah, sleep at last.